I'm here in Copenhagen, Denmark, and I'm with Mark Shuttleworth. We're here at UDS-R, the Raring Ringtail release. Mark, over the last couple weeks, there's been some controversy surrounding some of your blog posts and where um, community can contribute. How has this UDS cleared up some of that controversy? Ubuntu is, a, is a, this open community where anybody, anybody can come and participate. And we have very clear guidelines about when things have to land in the distro. Um, but until things land in the distro, they can be personal projects, they can come from anywhere. Um, and historically, we've brought some pieces to each release, which were developed inside Canonical. Um, that's not unusual, it happens inside every single open source company. Um, and I think one of the misunderstandings is that, that people have is that that's somehow different for Ubuntu than it is for any other platform. Red Hat, SUSE, uh, Canonical, any company that's working with Linux is often doing stuff that either involves partners or want they want to polish it up before they put it into a release. Um, we have very strict gating processes so that it has time to bake in the release before actually making the release. What I invited people to do, or what I said we were, were interested in doing, is actually inviting community members to participate in that. And the reason for that is that there's nothing, um, um, there's no sense in which we don't trust community members. There's no sense in which we don't think community members are good enough to, to participate in all of that stuff. We have good reasons for wanting to polish things up before we, before we go out to them. We may never do them, and, and it's a bad idea to sort of make things, say things that people will interpret as promises and then not do them. So, so what I was saying is, hey, we don't have any real secrets. If, if there are community members who want to participate in things before we're willing to, to release them, then tell us that you're interested and we'll do that. I thought that was actually opening up even further what is already the most open process um, in the world, fairly obviously. Um, but it was twisted and turned into a, 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 a message of going closed, which is just simply not true. Anyway, I think folks within the Ubuntu community very quickly understood the difference, and I don't think we have an issue. Mark, recently Stefano Zaccarilli and I were at a, a conference at the University of Illinois, and one of his slides said that derivative distributions are game changers. How has Ubuntu been the game changer in the open source community and world? We've always taken um, the view that we want to try and invent the future. We want to try and um, do things that represent the future of what people will want from their computers and do that in an open way with free software. Um, I think the big, big things that are driving change in computing today are mobile computing and the cloud. Um, and in both of those, I think we're in, we're in an interesting position. Um, Ubuntu has been deeply involved in the ARM community for four years. Um, and so we've learned a lot about how to be great um, on all form factors, all architectures. Um, and so I think that's very important for us now, really seriously looking at the mobile um, environment and how we could be a, a platform for mobile computing. Um, and in the cloud, we very early recognized that people were using Ubuntu there, and we've done a lot of work to make the base operating system fantastic on the cloud. We're now very deeply involved in helping people build clouds and the tools that essentially allow you to grow scalable clouds that can be run in production. Um, we already have all of the biggest OpenStack clouds running on Ubuntu. Um, and uh, um, I, I think we're very committed to making sure that it remains you know, the cleanest, easiest, best way to build an OpenStack cloud and the best experience to have on top of an OpenStack cloud. So I think those two things, cloud and mobile, are the driving forces for us over the next year or so. Speaking of cloud, um, yesterday here at UDS, you had the Ubuntu Enterprise Summit. Summit. Yeah. What was uh, one of the most exciting turn of events at that? What, what surprised you that maybe you didn't expect? And, and what can people expect to see come out of this summit? Um, so it's interesting. You know, this is an open developer summit. We have people here from competing companies. It re really is an open sort of space. Anyone can come here and participate in making the next Ubuntu. And for us, it's very interesting to bring potential customers and existing customers into this because we're essentially saying this is this is how Ubuntu is made, right? It's not made, you know, behind closed doors. It's made right here, and it's important for customers to understand and appreciate that. So that's nice doing doing that in a in a it's what's essentially a community event. Um, uh, because the customers often then quickly figure out that they can become part of that community and help shape the thing that they're, that they're depending on. Um, uh, I was really intrigued at the range of um, commercial, commercial use that people have, have uh, you know, adopted Ubuntu for. Um, so there are folks using it in government 
um, uh, both in the desktop and on server. There are folks using it in um, fairly mission critical type environments, which is very interesting. Um, and, and we're starting to get a lot of really interesting feedback of what people want from virtualization and cloud computing, um, which is very useful. So the last UDS, we, we saw Calzada with, with their server, and you speak of the ARM space and how, how you're in that. What hardware can we see, if any, going forward from Ubuntu? Um, uh, so the, the kind of low-power server or hyperscale server, hyper-dense server story, I think, has yet to fully play out. Um, I think it's an important story for ARM because it provides one scenario whereby ARM could, could feasibly become a, a part of the data center. Um, I don't think it's only an ARM story. Uh, I mean, I think we'll see low-power x86 from both AMD and Intel. Um, uh, and I think it, it's a story where the economics of software become even more important. Um, if, you are, if you are accepting that you're going to have many more um, light, lighter nodes, essentially, then the software cost has to be greatly reduced to make the whole thing work. So I think it's an, uh, the, the hyperscale area is an interesting area for Ubuntu because we more naturally fit um, where people are doing very high volume workloads, um, where the, 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 the um, mission criticality of any one node is, is hard to define, right? Any one node in a cloud can disappear and nobody notices. Um, any one node in a big web farm can disappear and nobody notices. Um, so I think, I think that's why it's interesting to us. As you look across the different hardware that's coming up, uh, the different mobile devices, the different areas where we're going to be seeing uh, n not only Ubuntu, but uh, there's others in the, in the game with all of that as well. But it's been, I've s seen the Nexus 7s mentioned, when you mentioned uh, Ubuntu TV you know, a couple cycles ago, Ubuntu uh, on Android. Where is that sitting? How's project strategy? You, you're now over product strategy with Ubuntu. How does that play into all of that arena? How, what is product strategy doing in that regard? So what we've said is that on the client side, we think that all of these different kinds of devices are um, different faces of the same thing. Um, a phone, a tablet, a, a laptop, a, a TV screen. Um, any sort of smart screen, they're all different faces of how we want to interact with things digitally. And they, they're all different, you know, a phone is not a PC, it's not a tablet, it's not a TV. But they could, they could echo off each other. And so the, our work on the client has been to pioneer, because nobody else has really tried to do this, um, to pioneer a, a, um, a family of interfaces that really are a close family, so much so that they can be running the same code, so that one device really can become any device. It was like a chameleon, essentially. Give it the right, give it the right harness, and it will be a PC. Give it the right harness, it'll be a TV. Um, and that's what's really interesting for us. Um, what we what we did with the TV is we showed how Unity, which we designed um, to to be the sort of core of this, can stretch to the TV. And in due course, we'll show the same for the phone and the tablet. Um, um, and uh, and. The feedback that we've gotten so far is that those that there, there really is a story there that these that these form factors really do fit well together. Um, so it's exciting now that we're starting to shape the core of Ubuntu to be mobile friendly because in due course we'll have a face for Ubuntu that is mobile friendly as well. It's exciting to me because I have all all these devices and and using Ubuntu, I would like to see that one day to have that all across um, all all my devices. When you look, and speaking of, of Unity and, and how, that, how you develop that and how, where that's going, at first the lenses were sort of, people didn't understand the lenses and the dash and, and the heads up display and I, even I didn't at first and now I have so used to it that I don't know what to do without it almost. How do you, did it surprise you that people sort of didn't take to that right away or didn't take to which take the, to, the, to the dash or? to the dash to the lenses to yeah. and it, even with the Amazon lens included sure. did it surprise you at all uh, no that was clearly going to be an, an emotional change for people right mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think there, there, there are two different stories that we want to tell 
with the lenses and the scopes. One is a story which basically says, hey, the more different scopes we have, the more you can search this or search that or search the next thing, the, the better that is. You know, The web isn't necessarily the best way to consume the services and data that's out there. Um, uh, the web brings in a lot of clutter, right? Um, if, in fact, if you can just get to the data that you want, that's better. Did you see this week someone put out a Minecraft scope where it's just like you, you, you press a key and then you search and you've got all the Minecraft recipes that you, that you might want. Which I is, didn't see it, but my son told me about right, it. Right, so which is <laughs> super cool, right? So, so that's the story. That's like a get, get me this or get me that or get me the next thing. Um, and then the second, second story that we can tell is to say, well, look, I don't, I don't know where the best place to get this is. Just you find it for me, right? And that's the story that we want to tell with the home lens, right? So the home lens tries to figure out what you want and gets that for you. Um, and at some point, we needed to, 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 to essentially say that that's not just going to happen locally. It's going to happen globally, right? That you might be looking for a Minecraft recipe um, or you might be looking for tickets to Copenhagen, right? And why can't we have it so that, so that the system, Ubuntu, just gives you that, right? Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to go out and look for what you're looking for. And, and what we needed to do is we needed to provide clear and specific mechanisms that you could say, I'm searching for a file or I'm searching for an application. Those exist. That's super A, super F, and they've always existed. The home lens is to say, I don't, I don't know where to look for what I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for something. Maybe it's in a Google Doc under my account. Right? Is that mine? Yes, it is, but it's online, but it's still my document. Maybe it's, it's a document that you know, IDC is offering me. It's insight into that. Maybe it's a book on Amazon. I don't know where that knowledge is. You go and find it for me. And that's the story that we wanted to tell. And I think that's the appropriate story to tell on the home lens because that's the, that's the kind of, I don't know, what I, you know, I don't know where, where it is, just go and find it. Go, you do the work. Um, and so... You know, I, I accept that there was an emotional reaction to that. We were going to see that anyway. I also don't think we, um, we, we stumbled on some of the execution things. Like we weren't encrypting on the first landing. We weren't encrypting the traffic to Canonical. Um, but here's the thing. We were equally criticized for, for, for landing it too early as for landing it too late. Some people said, you know, we should have, should have, should have landed it much earlier. Well, it, it did much less earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So you're sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? There are going to be smart people who, who, who say, you know, we should have should have landed it earlier. Then it would have been worse, or we should have landed it sooner, or you know, landed it later. Then that would have been worse for other people. Difficult. At the end of the day, the core story is this: what the dash should do is figure out what you want and find it for you, right? Yes. And that's kind of amazing. It's a very hard problem. I don't know if we can pull that off. I think it's an interesting problem. It's a problem I'm really passionate about solving. So that's all we'll do. I think it's. And and and, and people may have ideas about how we can do that better, which is great. So right. if you have, if people have ideas, they can let like yeah, strategy or it's, know, it's or open source. You know. It's open source. You know, fix it. Help us fix it. Make it better. That's great. But the mission there is: give me what I want. You figure out what I want. Find find it for me. And give it to me. And um, I think if everybody understands that mission, then we'll be cool. When you when you look at Unity and look at how Unity really is a game changer on the desktop, and how people now like, I had a some reason to go and see fall back to a 2D screen for some reason. Went, ah, no, I want Unity back. Are any other distributions looking at Unity? Or is anybody else looking to use Unity? There, I think there are communities inside other distros that say, well, it would be nice to have that. Um, there are some o obvious political awkwardnesses, right? Where, 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 you know, which we're just not going to get around very easily, I don't think. Right. Um, but again, here's the, here's the thing. What, what we're interested in doing is figuring out what the most amazing experience would be, right? And then building that really well. Um, we tried really hard to do that inside the community that we work, we're working in. And we got blocked at every turn on a, frankly, a political basis. It was just untenable. So we said we either have to just give up and not try or build it the way we think it should be built. And that's unity. And I think the fact that other, other platforms are following us is a really good sign. It means that for all the criticizing and complaining and bitching, at the end of the day, if they're copying what we're doing, then or th or they're doing it, you know, under a different name, then I think we're doing the right thing. We're leading. So yeah, I feel good about the, the fact that we have the commitment to explore, to innovate, to invent, to give it away as free software. 
And I know that we're looking for, at this cycle toward 13 and 4, but what really, looking at the milestone 14 and 4, what really um, are you personally looking forward to a year from now? So 14.04, we should be fully mobile, f you know, fully done. We should have phone, tablet, desktop, TV, all wrapped up in one platform that you can use on any piece of hardware. And I think that would be an incredible achievement. So that's what we're working towards. Mark, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Is there anything else I haven't asked you about that you would like to tell people about today? Just to say how cool it is to, to be here in Copenhagen, and especially here, we're going to get Copenhagen at our feet. Um, we've had an amazing uh, amount of participation um, that, that was entirely unexpected actually, just people who've come from all over Europe and, and, and dived in over here. Um, many more people sort of signed up late to come and, come and participate, so I like that very much. Um, there, there are lots of people who seem uh, really passionate about what we're doing here, which is great. Well, thank you again, and I look forward to 1304 and then later into 1404. See you at the next UDS.